Ah, a lot of people that come out here don't realize. It's all prairies here and, and cornfield. Ah, hello. Welcome, you made it, excellent. Listen, my name is Tony Labriol. I'm a professor here at Governor State University, but this isn't about me. This is about the place. It's right over there. Go ahead, take a look. GSU's History of Service to Returning Adult Students celebrates the Phoenix because our students exemplify renewal and reinvention of self. Now that was President Maimon during her installation remarks two years ago. You know, one of the hallmarks of GSU has always been that it's constantly renewed and reinvented itself, just like its students. Now sure, that makes it a moving target, but hey, that also makes it a lot more fun. In 1966, the Illinois Board of Higher Education recommended that a place for commuting college students be established in the Chicagoland area. They wanted it to be a model for higher education. It was the 60s, you understand. Yes! <laughs> anyway, in 1969, Governor Ogilvie finally signed the bill that created Governor State University. But he didn't do it down at Springfield. They all came up here to the Olympia Fields Country Club. And just a few months earlier in 68, they actually hired a new president. Shine until tomorrow. Yes. Let it be. It was a frantic time. There, there were, was great press for change. Um, some people just called it a hippie-type rebellion, but I don't think it was that. I think it was a cultural evolution in the whole nation. It affected every aspect of life. So Bill's friend, Herman Wells, who was the chancellor of Indiana University, said to Bill, Bill, you got the best job in the world. You got no faculty, no students, and no buildings. <laughs> Keep it that way as long as you can. Of course, that wasn't Bill Ingbertson's way. So uh, he set up administrative offices back here behind the auto repair store. Well, when I came to the campus, well, there was no campus. There was no temporary campus. I was interviewed in an office above a paint store. So we are in this old paint store. All the initial faculty crowded together in the summer, fall of 1970. My first office for six months was a typewriter stand and I was sitting on an overturned trash can. So he leased a factory building in this industrial park, hired faculty, and a year and a half later, he opened the university ahead of schedule. Here's the historic broadcast from that first day. Its setting is strictly rural, but its orientation is 100% urban. This is Governor State University at Park Forest South. The institution opened its doors for the first time today with an enrollment of 730 students. It was set up by the State Board of Higher Education for low and middle income junior and senior college students from the area of Chicago's South Side. The university is an experiment in education intended also to provide wider learning opportunities for minorities. Its programs are closely oriented to the communities in which the students reside. Our primary goals are to enable students to proceed from this institution, uh, efficient at the kinds of jobs, middle management posts, uh, leadership posts that we're training them for. We have other goals of cultural expansion, of inter- and intrapersonal relationships, and of uh, functional citizenship. The free architectural style of its learning areas reinforced the informality of its environment. The school gives no grades. Students set performance objectives for themselves. When each seven and a half week session called a module is completed, a student receives a statement affirming that accomplishment. The four colleges and the universities will grant bachelor's and master's degrees. As the saying goes, many people have gone through college, but college has not gone through them. One of the goals of Governor State University is to change all that. In Park Forest South, Harry Porterfield, TV2 Action News. So they use that warehouse while this building was being built on land donated by Lou Manilow. 
Now, Lou is a great art collector and supporter of the arts, and at the time, he had bought this and stored it in his garage. So he invited a guy named Mark DeSouvero over to his house. That's this house. It's a university conference center now. So Lou and Mark DeSouvero went to the railroad salvage yard and built this. And he called it Yes for Lady Day. And that's how one of the premier sculpture parks in the country was born. Because the site's good, you know, it's, it's, it's almost a blank canvas, but it's a nice, it's a, it's a tough environment. It, it isn't sylvan with a lot of trees and rolling, you know, it's, a it's a tougher environment. But uh, uh, by and large, the artist said, yeah, I'd like to do something here. So let's get back to the story, huh? So the university was built on the prairie. In 1972, students were ready to graduate and Bill Ingbertson finally got inaugurated. These are the actual notes he used for his inaugural address. It says here, it's probably another measure of Governor State's uniqueness that the president gets inaugurated three years and nine days after arriving on the job. <laughs> well, I came to GSU to learn all the things that I couldn't learn at Northwestern. The very nature of the university, the uh the walk, walk through through the college makes it possible to, to deal with and talk with other students from other disciplines. And we've developed a governance system. Here's Bill Ingbertson again. Yes. Students with the same number of votes on it as faculty, for example. All kinds of committees, maybe even committee too much. Each of our four colleges has a, com a community collegial council, so we get lots of citizen input. I appoint citizens to the university assembly who have the same vote as administrative and support personnel in this institution civil servants also work on the assembly standing committees and the university assembly that's an example of democratic participation and citizenship media television and audio were integrated in the program and the entire campus was wired and things like this were all over the place all you had to do was pick up the phone and ask for a film a video audio anything you wanted and sit watch and listen It was visionary, and perhaps too visionary. In the late 70s and early 80s, the faces did fade away, and it was more than a feeling. Well, you had to face the realities of higher education in America. Money was tight, and students were having trouble transferring to other institutions. Let me give an example. Here's a typical transcript from a student in that era from any institution of higher learning. Now, here's what you got from Governor State. This is a statement of competencies and the verification of those competencies and a portfolio of instructor evaluations from one student, <coughs> a graduating senior in 1975. Oh, with the notation that she passed. And her degree was in urban planning and ethnic studies through the programs of invention and creativity as well as language and the human condition. There were difficulties. Nothing's gonna change my And in 1976, Leo Goodman Malmuth became president. I think Leo's major contribution was to bring some order out of the chaos of all the energy and the new ideas and to bring some credibility to this institution. He led by the fact that he was here and did things. And I think people respected him for that. GSU began to get a better name under our second president. So we got grades, a provost, the colleges changed some of their names, we got a whole new organizational structure. Then it was the 80s, the me generation.
So, the university got walls, traditional classrooms, and enrollments which had been declining in the early 80s started to rise again. And uh, GSU's television and media reach went national with satellite programs. Welcome to Corporate America and the Environment. I'm Bill Curtis here at Governor State University in University Park, Illinois. And that's the tragedy, not that things are worse than they were, but that they are no better. We're either here to talk about how to contain, control students, and to contain the problem. The 90s was a period of stabilization and solidifying our position, both in the community and the nation. All of this was under the leadership of Paula Wolf and later in the new millennium, Stuart Fake. Today, in many ways, GSU is returning to its roots of civility and citizenship with the guidance of Elaine Maiman, our current president. In 2009, we are building on the legacy of the visionaries who founded Governor State University. We are making sure that students who begin in community college achieve bachelor's degrees and beyond. We are a welcoming place for adult learners, for students of diverse backgrounds. We are continuing to build a model 21st century university. So that's the story. But of course, that's not the end of the story. That's only the first 40 years. We're hoping we have 40 more. Who knows? Maybe even 400.